Good morning. I'm James Cornelius from the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum. And this month's Artifact of the Month for the Permanent Home Campaign is the clock in the Lincoln and Herndon Law Office here in Springfield. We are in the very office that they occupied for four or five years in the 1850s. And this is the very clock that occupied this very shelf in their law office. We're right across the street from the old state capitol where they argued cases at times, but not all cases. We hope that you can support the permanent home campaign because time is ticking down both on the new year approaching to us here in December and also on our timetable for uh, the permanent home campaign. Lincoln and Herndon had a lot of cases and Lincoln himself was on the road up to six months of each year arguing cases at all the county courthouses in the central part of Illinois. Hernan was the managing partner. He stayed here in the office most of the time. He managed the books, he managed their fees, he managed their clients, and they also had some law students, young men who were reading law with them rather than going to law school in order to become lawyers themselves. They needed a clock to keep on time. They were, of course, leisurely in many respects, in ways that we don't understand today. All of our lives are right, regulated by clocks. There's less so, but court did open on time. And the courthouse, just down the street from here, opened. That didn't chime right. We'll fix that. The courthouse opened in the morning on time, and the judge expected the lawyers to be there to present their cases. There was usually a pretty full docket, and Lincoln often had more than one case to handle in a particular session of the county court. Also here in Springfield, he was arguing before the US District Court at times, or before the Illinois Supreme Court. He had to keep on time. And that's why the clock is important to them. It winds with the old-fashioned key. Now it's finished its nine chimes. It's an old clock and it's a little rusty, but it still works. There is a worn out part here on the inside of the door where if you are turning it with a big hand, and Lincoln had a big hand, you would rub that down over and over. We suppose that that's Lincoln's skin print in part on this rubbed out a braided part of the wood there next to the winding hole. There is also in the back of this clock a little mouse hole down on the bottom. The old nursery rhyme about hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock, is apparently based in some truth because clocks like this provided a safe place for a mouse to hide from a cat or from anything else a relatively stable, small place to build a nest and have little mice. So, the Lincoln Herndon firm did not share its offices only with a law clerk, it seems. This clock was made in New Haven, Connecticut. It was probably sold to them by a traveling salesman, the Chauncey Jerome Lockmakers in New Haven was one of the biggest companies, and they sold a fair number of clocks with different designs. Design on this one, hand painted on the glass, shows Westminster Abbey in London. But some naughty little child seems to have come along and scratched off a fair bit of the design. We might guess which of the Lincoln children that was. 
Mr. Herndon kept this clock for a long time after his partner, his friend, Abraham Lincoln died. It's not impossible that it was a Herndon child who abused the decoration on it too, but it was Tad Lincoln who had the real reputation as the rowdy kid, and William Herndon did not like rowdy children. Lincoln was a brilliant lawyer, but he was not necessarily the one who looked up all the facts for cases. Herndon was a more scholarly individual. Herndon was the one who would keep the books and look through the books, find the precedents, and pass them along to Lincoln. They had an equal partnership. They split all the proceeds of the firm 50-50. That was Lincoln's idea because as a younger man, he had not got the half share in the law offices where he worked, and he felt that that perhaps was wrong. We see from a very early age, at least from 1844, when he hired William Herndon, who was 10 years his junior, that a, an even split of the law firm's receipts was the fair thing to do it. That's another indication of Lincoln's thinking. This clock may last several hundred more years. We're not sure. It was made about 1850, and it's been kept in good shape. We hope you will help us keep it in good shape and keep it running for the foreseeable future for all law students aspiring, law people themselves, and everyone else to come enjoy it at the Presidential Museum. Please help support the Permanent Home Campaign. Thank you.